Okay, I think I've kind of figured out how I want to do this. So I want to land on the twin craters because I can I can get just the top of it, and there's actually a crater. Uh, it's hard to tell because of the the map that I'm using for the moon, but there's this is kind of the top of the twin craters, and then like up here is a midland crater, and then all surrounding this is midlands. So there's like a little tiny spot that's a midland crater, which would be nice to get, and then the rest is all midlands around it. So that's three biomes, just boom, that's really easy to get. You pretty much land, hop, and then hop somewhere else and get all three. That should use very little fuel. We could take a risk and land in the east crater, right? Go from the east crater to the twin craters, pick up the science there, and then come back uh fuel might begin to be an issue so i'm quick saving and we're just gonna we're gonna figure out what the fuel would be like if i actually land it in the east crater because remember it's using primarily this uh bottom stage that i've had which i still have you know a third of fuel left on it so it should slow us down more than enough so i'm making my burn now and I'm just going to try to make it so it's as close as possible. It's almost like what we did last time we landed on the moon, except we're doing it with uh, a bit more finesse, hopefully. I could also... I forgot about this crater. You have two craters here. This crater is the northwest crater, which is weird because it's barely north. And then up here, you can kind of see it there. There we go. That's a little better. That is the um, northern basin. So... There's a couple other ones there, but that, that's taking up way too much fuel. Let's continue on with our <laughs> our current plan, which is to go to the East Crater, to the Twin Craters, to the um, Midland, to the Midland Crater. So, uh, yeah, that should be more than enough because uh, in slowing down, I'll burn the rest of the way. So we're going to quick save again, <laughs> just in case. And I think this should, this should work. I think this is going to work, guys. So let's get much closer to the moon itself and then we'll start making our maneuver once we're you know about right here-ish. I don't know how high that is up and we're about to find out. So right there, we'll come out of the map. We're at 16,000 and we can see the crater. This, this right underneath us, this is the top of the crater. So let's flip this sucker. Whoops, I'm going the wrong direction here. I also want to turn off my controls there because it was uh, it's still on like the micro control as far as making small adjustments. But I really want to flip the sucker around and start slowing down. I can actually land in the crater right now if I finish off this burn. So let's do that. We're also landing in a nice lit area, which should help quite a bit. I'm actually pretty happy with this landing spot right underneath here if we manage to get it correctly um what i may do is let myself get a bit closer to the ground a bit closer to the end of the crater that way it's an easier jump to the twin craters i think that might be the best plan this might be a close one uh we're coming in pretty hot <laughs> but we should we i mean we have seven thousand meters we have plenty of time right yeah, the rate that we're decelerating will be fine. But I'm not sure how quickly our next stage will decelerate us because we're going to be blowing this one off here. And, oh, there is something over there that we should probably investigate. It looks like some kind of structure. I'm sure Nurod could see out of one of his windows at what the heck it is. At least something on his instruments is picking something up over there. We should probably go check it out and figure out exactly... What the heck it may be. Ooh, turning on my lights and we are coming in fairly nice here. 40 meters a second. Yeah, whatever. Say what you want about how quick that is. We slow down rapidly. I do quite like this spaceship because uh, the design of it is pretty fuel efficient. You always gotta appreciate that kind of in uh, well actually i'm not gonna call it anything crazy look it's it's i got lucky with how i designed this sucker 
and I really quite like it. In fact, I can hit at uh, 20 meters a second and be fine when I hit the ground. I have done it at about 45 and flipped and rotated and managed to be fine as well. So I'm not too concerned about how quickly I'm coming in here. I'm just going to let my burn go. That's pretty much what it was at anyways. He like said I can hit the ground pretty hard with this thing. Okay, new rod. Uh, you have landed in one of the many craters here. Let's start picking up some science. So which one do we want to start on? I have a way to do this. So if that's the back of our vessel, this is the front. I'll start front left. And we'll take that. We will log the temperature. We will get some mystery goo. And then we will take a crew report, which we will send off. We'll let that send, and then we'll jump out and get a soil sample. Perfect. EVA. Let go. Turn on your rockets. Oop. He's, he's just gonna... Oh, he actually landed quite nice. EVA report. Uh, keep data, and we want a surface sample. Now, here's, here's my current dilemma. Do I put a flag down? I don't think I'm gonna put flag down for the biomes. I think I know where all the biomes are. Did I get a surface sample? I did, okay. So let's go back up. Let's avoid the little bar that I have going across. And grab. It's actually very white, this thing is. It's very clinical, as some might say. Now, I gotta figure out, okay, so if that's the back, then I want to kind of go up just a little bit. Uh, rotate the other way and then go oops and go this way I do actually want to see what the heck that arch is looks like I'm gonna land kind of in a weird spot I'm actually gonna burn this way did a little bit of a bunny hop over here I'm not gonna get all the way up there I don't plan on it there we go so that's putting us more on course of landing in a less awkward area and then we'll just head up there with a uh, new rod and he will do a bit of exploring. We'll figure out what the heck that thing is. So, uh, need to slow down a little bit more. I know I've said that I'm crash tested for 40 meters a second, but I don't like to get that close because <laughs> I haven't gone at really anything above that. So this should be uh, a decent pace to hit the ground. I should get under 20 just to, to be safe more than anything, especially because we're coming in at an angle. I'd hate angles because you never know what way you're going to flip as we've figured out uh, in the past with one of our more recent moon missions. Whoa. Got it. Okay. Perfect. Well, not so much. Let me just get out of the ground. There we go. Oh, oh gosh. Oh, dear. Come, come on. See that? Whoa. Uh, okay, is this broken? It might be broken. Let's... I'm going to try something. It's going to be risky. Uh, I'm going to have to quick load, I think. Because I think I broke the physics on the leg. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. Because as you can tell, it's just trying to sink into the ground. Like so, it's not... Oh, maybe... No, it's, it's about right. Yeah, it's a little damaged, but it should be fine. So let's uh, get him off the spaceship, and then we will put these on. It's time to go. Well, oh, oh dear. Oh, <sighs> look, nobody said that Neurod was the master of uh, EVA, but, you know, this is important data for EVAs. I think uh, as far as EVAs are concerned, which is, you know, going outside of the spaceship, this is this is good good information that he's going to be sending back to the the space center. They're going to wonder just how far and and uh, how how much the Kerbals themselves can handle uh, outside of a spaceship and how much monopropellant they're actually potentially going to end up using through an EVA such as this. Just some, it's important data. Stuff to know. I'm coming in a little fast. I'm going to bounce a bit. Yeah, just going to slow down. Let him boing. Okay, he's fine. He's fine. 
No broken bones. Actually, you would be hauling butt at that pace. Uh, we're pretty close to where we want to go. So we will just jettison our way more up than forward. So that way we get a bit more height. And that should allow us to kind of see more where the ridge is. I know we're going in the right direction. We just got to kind of break this ridge uh, up ahead. There it is. It's off over there. See, I knew I just needed to reach above the ridge. But still, still moving rapidly. Um, I'm okay with that because the way back down is actually going to be a lot easier. Believe it or not, we're going to have a little less issues getting down there than we are getting up. We'll lose, use less fuel because it'll be more of a, a jump and then kind of float across the surface. More so than what it is now, which is kind of a uh, hope that we don't smack a hill. Which would be painful, to say the least. Slow down a bit. Ugh. Ugh. Fire backwards. And ah, oh, perfect, perfect. He's not gonna—he's not gonna die yet. All right, one more. Let's go. Now this appears. Now that he's getting a better look. Uh, definitely just like a structure on the moon, but what what could have potentially caused this? I mean, uh, as a geological form is concerned. It's, you know, it's kind of uh, obtuse. Whoops. Oh, gosh. He was he was too busy admiring that he just ate it. It's it's pretty large, right? The the geometric uh, properties of this. It's, it doesn't really seem like anything else on the moon resembles this shape, especially in this area. You know, you look at the state of Utah. There are objects like this uh, stone forms and uh, mountain ranges and stuff that have these kind of objects in them but it's it's all over the place and you could definitely tell it's caused by things like erosion through water and stuff like that but this this is something completely different it's almost as if the structure itself goes beyond the moon surface because it's it's more of a loop like what kind of arch is formed like this naturally um a difficult one, that is for sure. It's also quite massive. You can see how small the Kerbal is in comparison to it. This is definitely something that uh, our poor Kerbal here will be taking pictures of, making mental notes of, and getting a soil sample of, because this sucker uh, is, does not appear to be natural. It appears to be synthetic, which is good news to the Synethians, but the Naturians, I don't know about that. It is also a little disturbing because if you imagine, well, you know, the, you know, the, the, whoever came before the Synethians, they may have gotten to the moon and they have made a structure here. If, if that is indeed them, then again, it could be something a bit more philosophical. It could be, uh, some type of, of hidden message set for the Synethians to find by the creator themselves. And, with that, they are able to more accurately determine the nature of their creator. It's all very uh, philosophical, theological, for the Synethians, at least for the Naturians. They're, they're trying to figure out how this would be created on the moon itself uh, as a natural object. But, of course, at this point in time, neither of the parties really know about it. I mean, our Kerbal needs to get back to a ship to the long range uh, communication devices there to be able to tell the people back on uh, Kerbin what exactly is going on. Until then, we're headed down this hill at a rapid rate, and I do want to conserve some mono propellant. Uh, don't hit the ground. Uh, oh, oh, that had to have hurt. That had to have hurt. He's actually skied quite a bit down. I haven't really had to do anything. He's just kind of falling with style, uh, if that's what you want to call it. He's, he's you know, he knocked himself out, I'm sure. That was uh, that was bad. That was, oh, no, he's, he's good. He's up. He's good. Let's get to our ship. I actually just noticed something, too. I think our, our propellant thing broke when I hit the ground. Because, look, I'm burning, but... It's not using any propellant. I'm, I'm probably going to have to reload the game. 
Um, I don't know what's going on there. Maybe if I get back in my ship and get back out, it'll it'll fix itself. Who knows? Uh, but whatever the case is, it does not want to. Uh, let's let's not bounce off the ground again, super fast or into our spaceship. That would also be bad. If if our if our Kerbal ran into the spaceship and knocked it over, that it would. There's a sense of irony there, but it's also just hilarious. Let's let's not let that happen. Let's slow down enough that that is going to be just fine. I'm kind of glad that it broke, though, because I would have had to walk all this way. And that would have taken some time. Also, I need to save some. You don't actually need a lot. You need about 20 for what I have to get up and down a few times. Uh, because you do get quite a bit of a boost. I'll show you what I mean. Whoop. Oh, 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 he's he's skiing again. Oh, oh, he's, he's up. He's up. He's good. He's good. He's back awake. And I'm sure he can't wait to get into the spaceship and be like, guys, you have no idea what I just found. It's crazy. Wait until I send you some pictures. No, it's not a female Kerbal. It's, in fact, something much more mischievous. Okay, grab and in. Perfect. Uh, whoop. Oh, interface is breaking again. It's happened a few times uh, since I installed uh, one of my other mods. So obviously I'm going to, I broke a lot of things. I'm going to have to fix that. But for sure, we need to get over to the Twin Craters. So that's our next uh, move here. How I want to do that? I don't know. I got to figure out the direct trajectory here. But I think first I am going to restart my game. Thank you.